Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Wow, you can really dance. (laughs) Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today I'm here with my fiancé, Ryan Harrington Riley. Woo! And we are here with a special guest. Do you want to introduce our special guest? Yes, we are here with my sister, Reagan Riley. An employee. <laughs> <laughs> Reagan um, is yeah, Ryan's little sister. So it's Ryan, then it's his brother Grant, and then it's his brother Reed, and then it's Reagan Sophia, mm-hmm. and then Alexa. Mm-hmm. So got mm-hmm. a pretty big family. And so we get to have Reagan Two with us, us today. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it's been a cool, what God's been doing in our family over the past couple of years. It's been really cool because uh, we... We're all scattered at one point. Reagan was in Colorado at one point. I was in Texas. Grant was in Texas. And yeah. And then throughout the course of the the years until now, just last Friday, we were all sitting in the room, our whole Mm -hmm. family together, which was Mm -hmm. pretty, it's been a big blessing and never would anticipate that God would, would do that. But he's bringing a lot of, yeah, just a lot of, Bring us all closer to him and healing and mm. Reagan's been spearheading some of that. So it's been cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's been emotional for sure. But um yeah. I mean big families a lot come up. You have sort of different personalities. Yeah. I'm I mean the rotors are also from a big family. So yeah. I love that two big families sorry, I hit my mic. Two big families are merging because yeah. that's so much fun and there's so much dynamics with like big families that you can't really explain. Like mm-hmm. Yeah, and I do wanna uh just clarify what I was saying. I think that uh, Reagan has, it's not you that's spearheading it. I know it's the Lord that's mm. spearheading it, um, but he's using you. So it's Amen. really cool Thank to you. see that. So, mm. yeah. Amen. All right. Well, Lord, um, you are so worthy of all of our time mm. and energy and, and love. So God, I, I pray that you would, uh, use this time to, uh, speak to whoever's listening, um, just as we share some of the work that you've done in our lives. God, glorify your name and uh, help all of our words and our speech to be honoring to you. Uh, I know we can be uh, silly sometimes or can just be like to joke around, but God, we uh, just pray that you would increase our love and, uh, and um, passion for you, God. And increase the love and passion for you that of anybody that's listening. Um, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here talking and for the opportunity to to be in your family. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Well, this is an exciting episode because we get to talk about a little bit of Reagan's bio and a little bit of how we met Ryan and I, which she You were a part of that and got to see that. So that's exciting. And uh, I also wanted to just mention like just how cool it's been to see you grow. And I mean, I actually have seen you since you were like a little girl. I remember being so jealous that you never wanted to play with me. (laughs) And like there was all these other girls that you would like, because you, it was you and Lexa and you guys, I always thought you were like twins, just these two little toe heads just Mm -hmm. running around at football games. And then I was always like, come here, little girl. And I was like, <laughs> creepy person. I was like, wanting to hold you and like be with you. And then you're just like, no. oh, no. <laughs> like, brick wall, waterfall, yeah. girl. You think you got it all. You're so glad you remember that. <laughs> but I remember that. And so it was so cool. I think what just really blessed me was when um, I think I asked you to come to like a birthday thing that I had. And then the card you wrote to me was just mm. meant so much. Mm-hmm. And it just shows like that's. I wish I brought the card, but it just shows like how intentional you are and with people yeah. and even with parties or things that we have, you just are the person who you'll invite everyone. Mm-hmm. And you, you're, the joke is with your family is like, okay, you're inviting too many people, but like, that's yeah. who you are. Like you're a hostess and you love to include people and no matter who they are, if they're cool or not, like you probably would 
rather have the quote unquote uncool people than those who are really cool. So I just really appreciate that about you because that is the way of Jesus, right? He was friends with those Mm. for the sinners and those who are sick and knew they needed a doctor. And so I see that in you and I really appreciate that. But anyway, thank you. So um, I'm excited that you're going to be my sister and you already (laughs) feel like you are, but that's exciting. So anyway, um, do you want to start with the... Who are you and why are you in this room? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can just share with a little bit about share who you are and what brought you to Calvary or what brought you to help with the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so let me think. What brought me to Calvary? So Ryan was actually the kind of, so I knew you guys' family because if anyone is listening to this and they're from Tucson, Tucson's really small. So it's like, if you know family, they probably know family that you know that you know. And so we know the rotors from um, Push Ridge, but I never knew you guys like personally. I just knew that because you're more my brother's age. Um, mm-hmm. And so he came here and then he ended up loving the church and invested in relationships. And I was like, it's just a really far drive. But mm-hmm. also, <laughs> if I was going to invest in relationships here, That's I true. want it to be like relationships that I just don't take the relationships I invest in lightly. And mm-hmm. so if it's going to be pe- people I invest in, it's going to be people like I invest in, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, and I just don't like to be fake about it. So um, I thought about it for a long time and probably for too long. And so I ended up deciding that I think it was one time actually a few months ago after I left and I felt like it was just on my heart that I was like, I need to go back and mm-hmm. I just need to keep going back. And mm-hmm. um, just because mm-hmm. if you come here, you can tell that, there's just a chemistry of people who, and I think people can tell it because you guys have invested so much into each other already, like mm-hmm. the young adults. So it's like, you can't, it's like a priceless thing. Yeah. You know, like, mm-hmm. I don't know if you walk into a room and there's so much love for each other, it's like, it's because you guys have invested, you know, mm-hmm. so much into each other. And so you're able to like love a stranger because you're comfortable with the people who are mm-hmm. already there. And so I think that's really cool. And so it's like that you're inviting people mm-hmm. to come and be a part of the group, you know, is really cool. Mm. And so it's not like you're exclusive. Mm. And so mm. it's a big honor, I think, mm. to be able to be a part of that group. And so mm. I'm super happy that I get to be here. And I know that I'm kind of the newbie, but <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, yeah. And yeah. so it's, I'm transitioning into the podcast and I try to come on Sundays and Wednesdays, but uh, it is kind of a far drive, but for the podcast, I don't know exactly what my role is. I know that I just love hearing people's stories, and mm-hmm. I love hearing mm. the authenticity behind why someone comes to Christ and, like, mm. the realness behind it because yeah. um, it's different talking to someone in church versus hearing behind the scenes, you know? Mm. And so, and I just learn a lot from people, and so that's why I love it. And um, also, I got to be around the people who I want and invest in. And I know that these people also, if they are going to invest in me, I know they're not going to take that lightly Mm. either, which is so like priceless today, you know, like friendship is so taken lightly that it's like, you can't really Mm. know like what a real friend is. And Mm. so I'm very careful on like who I invest my friendships in. And so it's like, you guys provide a priceless gift to people by Mm. saying that you guys are true friends who are going to love and disciple and walk through life with you Mm. which is really cool Mm. and so that's how I see it and so and Mm. you guys are really fun (laughs) so (laughs) and Fia brings the Cheez-Its and the snacks and the laughs and I bring the Cheez-Its and I have an obnoxious Uh, loudly laugh no my dad so you guys know my dad Pastor Craig his favorite laugh in the whole world is Reagan's laugh oh no (laughs) literally and then Reagan also she got him this shirt because one day she said she called him Poppy because, like, you know, one day, like, where our families, families are, are going to be for sure, like, a family as when Ryan and I get married. And so um, she got him the shirt, you know, like, that says, like, Top Gun, but it says Top Poppy. Yeah. And so he was so cute the other day. He's like, can you just take a picture so you can send it? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so and so adorable. he loves it. And I just love that, yeah, our families, even though, you know, like, we're so different in certain ways. Like, I feel like my family, we're more like, we just talk it out and like, we'll just be very intense. Like your family, I think they're like more thinkers and they'll just be more quiet and think about Mm -hmm. it. Like, I think that's so good for our families to come together because we can both learn things. Like what I learned from Ryan is like, hey, before I just get into a conversation, let's pray about it. Let's take some time. And then I can encourage him like, hey, let's talk about it. Like, this is important. 
let's deal with this. So I just love how God's bringing that together. And he knew that. And my dad actually was your dad's youth pastor back in the day at Grace Chapel. So they're the same age. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think my dad um, is six years older than Mm -hmm. your dad. And so I think at the time my dad was like 23 and your dad was like in high school. So that's crazy. And then, yeah. Um, Tucson is a small town. It is. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> everyone knows everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and then the the other cool thing is that, um, so you worked at Heritage, but you just got a new job. So do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so for the last year and a half, um, I've been working at Heritage, which has been really, really cool. Um, so it's an assisted living. And so I know that I don't know the audience that listen to the podcast, but if you have looked at assisted livings, there's a night and day difference versus people that carry, like, people who care for, like, the elderly and people who just care about the money and the business. And mm-hmm. so and so I've gotten to see that, and, like, mm-hmm. I think my character has changed so much since mm-hmm. being there. And it's been so cool because it's really, um, I feel like the main lesson that I learned, which is also um, what the Ritz the guy who runs Rich Carlton teaches is like Mm -hmm. that the little things matter, like the little things for loving people matter. Mm -hmm. And so it's also something Heidi Baker says is like, she doesn't understand why people want to do the big things for God whenever Mm -hmm. do like the little things with great love. And so at the assisted living, there's Mm -hmm. so many little things each day, you know, in every Mm -hmm. job that you have, there are little things that you can do. But that's what I've learned is that it's really about the mentality that like what that little thing that you're doing for that person matters, you know. Mm. And so it's been really, really cool. And so it's been a huge blessing for me to work there. But I am leaving. (laughs) Unfortunately, (laughs) it's been really cool to work with my brothers. Um, We've had to learn what professionalism means, Mm -hmm. of Mm. course, because it's a family business, but it's all part of the growing experience. And I'm getting a job at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be completely different. But just setting myself up for nursing career so yeah that's, that's plan on where i'm planning to go <laughs> yeah. yes and Keep then the other day it. who mm. asked that um trinity asked this question so she was just saying like who's like a really hard worker that you know and he, he said you like that was one of the hardest workers he knew and that one of trinity? his best workers yeah. trinity asked ryan that oh. and so she, he answered mm. that you're one of the hardest workers that he knows at heritage and like he uh, we were joking too. Trin's like, so Ryan, if you were old and like Mariah wasn't taking care of you, and I was like, I hope I would take care of him. <laughs> I just sent him to a home. And she's like, who would you want to take care of you? And we were just like, probably Reagan. Like, she, <laughs> she'd take care of her brother well. But so I just Probably. think that's also cool because uh, you and Reagan have like very similar personalities and mm. just are very, like thinkers. And what else do you want to say about your sister? Do you feel? So you think her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the what I was saying about about wanting you to take care of me is just seeing how you've uh been in at work and grown and you're always like hungry to for more. Like mm-hmm. you said the other day that you when you get ask for feedback, you want real feedback. You mm. don't want people to to um you know, be, be, yeah, sugar coating, Mm -hmm. uh, which is really good because, um, it's like, what's that one verse that talks about wounds of a friend? Yeah. And the kisses of an enemy. That one is good as well. I was was thinking of the one where it like, it's, uh, that basically the followers of the Lord don't fear bad news. Oh, Psalm 112. Yeah. Because, Mm um, I don't know, just you, and it's, so, Proverbs 12, 12, 1, where it's it's uh, stupid to hate correction. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you must learn to love discipline. So just having that mentality of always wanting to grow, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, really taking going the extra mile in the little things, like uh, whether that's little fun pranks to add joy to the day, <laughs> or Take the other day. That. Or the other day she came up with the idea with the team of having little jars for each team member and, and writing gratitude notes for each person. So it's kind yeah. of a way for the team to encourage each other yeah. and bond. And I haven't read mine yet, but it's pretty... Um, There's juicy stuff in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's anonymous, so it's real, you know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but just little things throughout the day that bring joy. And I think it's... The big things are what we're responsible for in our jobs, but 
all of us can take that to heart of being like, how can I go the extra mile mm. and be, have my ear to the Lord's Holy Spirit mm-hmm. on what, he, how he wants me to be interruptible and minister to somebody. Yeah. Um, because we can work it up in our own strength, but it's going to fall flat, you know, but yeah. if we really follow his lead, then it's going to really touch somebody's heart and it'll be the hands and feet of Jesus to people who need it. Mm. So I think I see that. And I hear your laugh echoing down the halls. <laughs> so I think we're going to miss that. Uh, but Can I have it's it on cool. like an intercom? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think something good. Like one of those, one of the canned laughter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> we should have that on the you podcast. Like, yeah. Yeah. like anytime there's something funny, we should have it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Press so <laughs> I love it. We have to put mute on their button every time that I laugh. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've learned that like leadership is so, and I don't know where you want to head um, with this conversation, but um, just really quickly is that that leadership is so important. And so like the fact that I have a brother who like, mm. I remember being like annoyed walking in and he's like getting out the duster mop and like cleaning the top of the roof. I'm like, are you serious? Like no one's ever going to look up there. Yeah. Like, and so he's taught me like the mm. little things matter. And the fact that it all begins with his pursuit, you know, of Christ in a genuine way. And so like the fact that mm. it trickles over into like the workplace and that it affects me, you mm. know, because you're our leader, you know, and like mm. you're, you're the one who's teaching and training everybody else. And so we're going to follow what you're teaching and training us. And so mm. the fact that you're learning how to train us based off scripture is like the only thing that would stand, you know, because mm. it, it's the rock, but to see mm. it like actually an experience and how it's going to like affect my life is like super cool. Mm. And mm. so that's like, honestly a priceless thing that I wouldn't change for anything but I've known other people like the companies I was talking about that care more about money is that people say they walk in there and they're like there might be things that seem nice you know like but there's no like there's no personal like one-on-one um Mm -hmm. experience and so uh there's no like connection which is like honestly what people are longing for is that like you know me like you know me Mm. and like not that necessarily I get whatever I want like and that is part of it like that you care for my needs but it's like that you know my name and like you know my story and like you care about me and like Mm. a lot of places don't offer that and so that's what I think is cool about heritage is like that that's what our top priority is is that like we care about your heritage like we care about your name and like we care about your legacy too and so mm. um and your dignity and so that's why i think is really cool because i do think that is like something that's really important and something that like i don't know why i was placed at heritage but and around my family all the time and ryan's at the house and grant's at the house but just because like we're from a christian family doesn't mean that everything's pretty and so like yeah. we just went to our first family like therapy session and like a lot of people came out and was like so why are we here and so i was like just because i know that like i family is super like it's one of the most important things to me and I want to have the best relationships I have like can have with you guys even if it means going to the most hurtful places and talking about it and healing from it and moving forward and so like Mm -hmm. we're in like kind of a a good season with family but it's going to be like painful because we each have our own story in which we've hurt people and so I mean me I struggled Mm -hmm. with an eating disorder from like 13 to 19 and so Mm -hmm. me being in recovery it's it's learning a new identity and it's learning a new identity in my family. It's learning how I hurt them, but also how they hurt me. And it's with like other people. I don't want to bring up other people in my family stuff because that's their own stuff. But for me, it's like, I can know that Christ loves me, but if I have like all this stuff on me and I don't heal and I don't talk about it, then it's like, mm. sometimes it, I know it in my head, but it doesn't hit into my heart. And so, mm. um, when you talk about loving people intimately, it's like, sometimes there's a block between like Christ's love whenever you're trying to heal from something that it's like a shame blanket, you know, around you. And that's mm-hmm. like a lot with addiction. It's like, you know, I'm not worthy or all these things that you hear. And so if you keep that inside of you and like, you don't talk about it, especially with the people that like affected you, like my family, then it just builds. And so that's kind of a season that we're in. And like, we've talked about it like briefly before, you know, I've done like family counseling and stuff, but never like in depth. And so it's going to be pretty brutal, and uh, we're a pretty open family, just like you guys are, but not podcasting it. So this is like not like my comfortability level, but um, it is reality and is our story. And so just learning, like uh, Christ's work through it, is like so much more real. Whenever it's like we have to choose to go through the hard work, you know, we have to choose to be like 
who we were and like who we are now and like it's not easy work you know to um what is it sanctification is like it's not easy and like it's always a choice but it it's always beautiful like at the Mm -hmm. end because it's always so much freedom and that's why my verse I chose is Galatians 5 1 it's like don't be burdened to like another I have a bible which I can look it up but like a yoke of slavery or something like Mm -hmm. that because it's like that's what it is it's like a yoke of slavery but it's always presented in a way that is like seems like it's Mm. offering you the world whenever really it isn't Mm. um and especially with the world saying that it's presenting you the world you know Mm. like whenever else is being like that's why i also like being around you guys is that you guys are of sound mind and like whenever you go out into the world they're going to encourage habits that you know aren't going to offer you anything and so Mm. and maybe they Mm. are your friend and they love you but it's true friendship to direct someone into a place where, like, you know, is going to head them in, like, a dir- like a solid direction. Mm. And a lot of things just don't lead that way. Mm. Um, and so that's the po- kind of point where we're at with our family, which I'm, like, I'm super excited about. But mm. Um, mm. when we talk about the seasons, I think that it's, like, you guys are merging together, <laughs> which we can talk about um, the marriage. And then also behind the scenes, like, our family is just um, learning how to communicate um, yeah. respectfully, but also mm. about things that, Finding your own voice, you know, whenever it's a big family, finding yeah. your own voice um, instead of just letting one person be heard. But anyways, that's, that's uh, good. Well, that's you look it. up that verse, though, because that would be cool to read that. Galatians and then 5, one. Galatians 5, one, And then did you have anything to go off that or that you were thinking? Because you were going to say something. And mm-hmm. I was just going to say, do you have it that fast? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, it's my life. It opened right? right to it. God that is good. Um, <laughs> Jinx. Cool. Well, I was going to, I was just going to say what, uh, it, if anything else, if, what do you feel like the, your relationship with the Lord, like, what is he speaking to you or what do you feel like he's been teaching you in this season? Mm. Um, or how is, you don't have to sh- share your whole testimony if you don't want, but just what, at least right now what do, what do you feel like he's um so, so my testimony yeah. will be so there's a lot to it because it was a lot of years so i'll probably do another yeah. session with oh. mariah which i'm totally comfortable talking about but i'll answer your question because i was thinking about it um and i think it's just like um i like what mariah said to me the other day is that like she feels like god is pouring into her the love like you know the love his love um characteristic you know which he is love and so um that's something that we should feel from him but just like all the things that he's restoring you know and Mm -hmm. so it's like it's my identity it's my worth it's like which is everything that i've had from the beginning but it's something that i like lost sight of and so it's like my relationships it's my family it's like my dreams is my future it's like everything that is not tan- like of you know something i could go to the store and buy but it's mm-hmm. something that gives me hope you know and it's all rooted in him and so i think that um hopefully that answers your question but mm-hmm. um i think as i begin like as i continue to grow and like walk in him like they're going to become more cemented in my heart but like just the fact that i don't know um that he does so freely, you know, like that he didn't only die on the cross, but he only, he comes and like restores me now is Mm. so beautiful. Like it's so intimate, you know, and that's what I love um, about this season. It feels so intimate because what I'm walking through is so intimate, you know, because it's like the most intimate thing that I walked, you know, went through. And so it's like, he's Uh changing everything around, but it's just, Mm. you know, uh, and so it's like a whole new perspective on life. It just, hard to take in sometimes Mm -hmm. um and I know that like I know that I know that I'll like help other girls you know walk through it one day which I think is the most beautiful thing because it's like that's an honor you know especially whenever there's a lot of I've been to a lot of treatment centers and there's a lot of stuff out there which is good but also a lot of stuff out there which is like new agey and so Mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff out there that Mm. might help stabilize you but won't help set you up for success in the long run which is honestly like God's word and like Mm -hmm. his love because that's what will like root you firmly and so like the fact that I will have the opportunity yeah to do that is beautiful um but right now I'm definitely in a place of healing um Mm -hmm. and so I I mean I know that because just things that come up and so um and I just 
love that I can rest, like, in that season, that mm. there's no pressure or timeline for me to feel like I have to be here or here, but, like, I just can, like, not to, like, just, you know, kick in my feet and be, like, whatever. Like, I'm still working through the process, and yeah. it's, like, it's emotional, but um, that I can rest and realizing that it's about me, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, it really is about me and my heart, but, like, just that I can't impact other people when my heart is still hurting. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. I, I still can, but like that he wants to work on my heart. Amen. And so um, that's the season that I'm in. And that's why I feel like mm. Jesus is speaking to me um, Amen. on the fly. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <that's good>. yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And she I, was right before we started this, she's like, I'm very tired. So she's <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm going to know what I'm saying. And you're just like, it's all the off. white cheddar <laughs> cheese. It's in the snaffle. <laughs> 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 Uh, but you have the verse. Um, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Um, so I love this verse because there are some verses that, I guess, because of your experience, they feel more, like, real. You know, like, they have more, like, they are all real, but they feel more intimate. And so I guess I just love, like, stand firm because it's, like, something that's, you know, I don't think that you do that alone. So, like, stand mm-hmm. firm. So I love that, like, as a family, like, we're standing firm. Um, and I just don't want to submit again to anything. And I know like, and it goes with a sound mind. So, um, just being around people who are sound minded and not submitting again to anything that is like gonna bring me down a hole that will not offer life. And, you know, I've been down that hole so many times, so I know what it's like and I know that it's dark. And so like, I know that I don't want to go there, but whenever you're not around people who will help you stand firm it's really easy to go there. Yeah. And so um, that's why I like that yeah. verse. And we can't do it alone. Like Ryan knows with his testimony, with my story, and then with your story, like yeah. he just said, we can never think like, oh, I would never go back to that because it was so painful. Like that's when Satan comes in and yeah. then he attacks. Like that's why, again, we need the body of Christ. We need fellowship and we need accountability. Uh, and then we also just need to admit those times of temptation, the times of weakness, because sanctification, like you're saying, to the day we die, it's a process of him. You know, the flesh that keeps wanting to come off the cross, that we have to nail it to the cross every second of the day. Like, mm-hmm. there's always temptation. There's always something. And the cool thing is that God redeems and he delivers us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's where I just get really excited with this podcast because we have so many stories of redemption. Mm-hmm. And that's what God has done with you. He's redeemed you and bought back. He buys back the wasted time where we think, oh, I wasted, right? You could think I wasted all those years where I could have done this, that, and that. But God sovereignly, Romans 8, 28, works all things together for the good of those who love him or are called. Like you probably would be off like playing soccer in college or doing something like, or being somewhere you shouldn't right now if it weren't for that dark season. Mm-hmm. So we don't know, but God does. And so we need to not be like, woulda, coulda, shoulda, like, I wish this didn't happen, but really thankful for what God's doing right now. And that today is a day of salvation. Like, praise God, you know him and praise God that Jeremiah 29, 11, like, uh, he knows the plans, like plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. And that's what he has for you. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was telling you, it was like one Sunday, Morgan was talking about something about, um, Hagar and how like God, he saw her, like he's Mm -hmm. a God who sees. And then I had just told you that like a week before, like, I don't know why, but I really feel from the Lord that he wants to tell you that he sees you. And so it was just cool how like God's been just like confirming things. And I know you've been to like some conferences or like different stuff. And there's like cool things where it's like, God speaks, like God moves and he's real God. He's not a God who we just like read in the word. And that was like thousands of years ago. Like it's now, Mm -hmm. like he speaks to you today. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it's just beautiful, but do you have anything else? Yeah, and I think the other thing that we see through this process is um, the redemption <clears throat> and also the failure of of humans, you know, in our, but what I love is that there's a verse that I don't know where it is, but it says even when we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. Mm. And so learning that, just seeing that we can, Every we can lift our hands at all times and give the glory to the Lord because um, He is good no matter which angle we look at Him. Yeah. Mm. And uh, when you were saying saying that you can rest, it reminded me of this song that the lyrics is called "He He Has Time," and it says that Jesus runs after the broken ones, weeping with those who weep, and crowns them with purity. Mm. and years of years of shame shatter in jesus name mm. and he uh 
He is here. Um, he has time. Amen. Okay, I just wanted to also talk about, um, Christy had just said that too, just how the fact that you're so young and have so much wisdom because you're 21 years old, but you have so much wisdom because you've been through a lot, but also because of the word of God and because you understand that that's where you get your truth right before. Like you were saying, it was like new age and like worldly things, but just going into that and like when Ryan had just asked you like what has God been speaking to you and you're able to like articulate that like that's powerful for someone your age so what do you feel I don't know just anything else that you would like to share pop quiz oh okay what does Sophia mean I don't know are you like the definition of (laughs) yeah I don't know tell me Oh, I think, so my name means wisdom. Um, what? I don't know which one does. I didn't know that. It's Reagan Sophia. It says wise queen. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, so Re- just Reagan born at the wrong be... time. Solomon, fine. Too many concubines, but I'm way, <laughs> way up here. Re- Reagan <laughs> would be the queen part in Sophia's wisdom. Wow. Yeah. So that's why we have to call you Reagan Sophia because it's queen of wisdom. Yeah. Not like Solomon. That's high, very high standards. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather just be queen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Well, let the, let the Lord do it. And Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it is all him, honestly. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, do you have anything else that you wanted to say before we close? Or No. Well, did so, you have anything? If you were an ice cream flavor, what would you be? <laughs> um, okay, so if you're from Tucson, um, you probably, I don't know if Frost is um, mm-hmm. like, like in no, other I places. I don't know. But there's, I always say this wrong. There's a flavor called Stractella. Oh. Stra- Stracatella. Stracatella. <laughs> um, it's Italian. And they have vanilla with like these chocolate bits, but it's so good. And so I know that sounds basic, but it's like, it's not basic. It tastes mm-hmm. really, really yummy. And so I'd probably be that flavor. And I'm probably doing that because I taste like, because it tastes the best, but um, (laughs) not because I taste like it, but (laughs) (laughs) There's no cannibalism here. No one debates me, Um, but. (laughs) Well, I was saying to Ryan, because you guys are similar, I was saying that he would be a vanilla bean. So it's kind of similar, like vanilla, but I said it's got like a little speckle of like the... The bean, the dark. I don't know. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> but like, you could top it with anything. I feel like you're, that's where you're so deep. Like you're so, you can put some cherries on it. You can put some chocolate, some uh-huh. caramels, some Oreos. Philosophizing so with ice cream flavors. <laughs> yeah, one hundred and one. One hundred and one. Welcome to our class, Zoe. One hundred and one. What All about right. you, Ryan? What yeah. is your ice cream flavor? Um, I love to eat. I do like to eat the cher- like vanilla cherry or cherry mm-hmm. vanilla with like the little cherry pieces. Those are really good. So that's my dad's favorite. So Aww. I wonder if that's genetics. Oh, that might be one. Yeah. <laughs> Feeding you in the womb. Yeah. <laughs> Mom was eating it. Yeah. Yes, Ryan, that is one thing about Ryan is he likes sugar. He likes sugar, and I like carbs. Savory. Savory. That was true. But ice cream flavor. That one? Yeah. I like that. And then mine was mint chocolate chip. Minty fresh. <laughs> Not that I'm minty or fresh. But... Uh, <laughs> You're both. Anyway, um, so yeah, we have a good time together. We want to learn some fun dances before the wedding. And our podcast team, we love to dance. So, mm. yeah, we're excited mm. for that. Um, any closing thoughts or anything you want to say? Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess just something I've been thinking or been asking myself is just, like, what can I – what is God teaching me in this season? And so when you ask, like, what wisdom am I learning, it's more what am I asking myself, I think, mm. right now, just so I can be learning. So that's just something I've been asking myself. It's just, like, what is, what are people teaching me? And I, I think it's cool is that it's by so many people. And usually mm-hmm. it's by people that are, like, around me. Or it's, like, sometimes it takes a while, like, the workplace, like, learning that. Or just something that you have to, like, be aware of. And so... What has, what has God been teaching you, Ryan, over there? One thing he's been teaching me is, <laughs> yeah. Well, the other day, there was this um, lady who, at church on Wednesday who gave me a word, and it was, uh, she said she felt it very strongly from the Lord, and it was humble yourself. <laughs> and I was like, Ouch. you know, my flesh didn't like that, <laughs> of course, and she knew that. So, but I think it's been really good, and the Lord's been showing me what it, what it, it 
just different situations where it comes up. And I think it really is, if you want to be a disciple of the Lord, he takes you out of you and he replaces it with himself. And so we need to be, we need yeah, just to be <laughs> him, mm -hmm. you know, in every little sit situation. And that is not natural. Mm -hmm. And so being willing to be undignified and wholly given over to the Lord's purposes is, is, uh, the ultimate humility. And so when, when I get that word, like the perfectionist is in me, in me is like, okay, humble myself. Let's go. Okay. How are we going to do this? Crawling and then, on the ground. For yeah. The day. <laughs> yeah. Sad, and ashes. <laughs> yeah. Or even just like, you know, religious stuff. And then you fall on your face and, uh, over and over again and so it's been that in itself has been really humbling just to realize I can't be humble by myself even so it's all the Lord's work that he needs to do so I think everything that we get from the Lord comes from being on our knees and mm. um, receiving what he gives us Amen. and that he Amen. tells somebody else <laughs> something mm. personal about you is also humbling yeah because it's like yeah. That someone else that comes to you and says that to you. It's like exposing, you know, yeah. but it's kind. I mean, yeah. I think we, I, I need to be humbled a little mm. bit. Just a so, little bit. Um, yeah, and that's but. kindness. Like, I like that you use the word kind because mm -hmm. if someone was being nice to Ryan, they would just say, Ryan, you're like, from just like seeing you, you would just assume like, why would you give a word like that to Ryan? Like, yeah. he just seems so humble, right? And that's where it's like kindness is not always saying the thing that's nice. It's saying the truth in love. Right. Even how she said it, she was very careful. Like, I don't like she wasn't wanting to, like, just say that and step on your toes. But that's the whole point. Point. <laughs> the whole point <laughs> of saying something that is from the Lord and out of love than just trying to flatter and just like wanting the person to like you. Mm -hmm. And we need to be those friends like we've been talking about. Like this podcast is about the truth and discipline, even though it feels doesn't feel good in the moment. The Bible says in the end, it produces a harvest of righteousness. So that's what we should all be longing for is just that harvest of righteousness at the end of our life mm -hmm. when we are in heaven or yeah, when we stand before the Lord, just being able to like see that we weren't lied to by people that we were told the truth because people care about our eternity and salvation. So one of my favorite verses is Psalm 139, 23 and 24, which is search me, O God, and know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any wicked way within me and lead me on the way of everlasting life. And that was actually my mom's favorite verse. And she would lead that before she started any woman's study. And I think that's just what we need to do, especially as women. Like my dad was saying on this past Sunday, he was talking about uh, how women and just men, any of us, like we need to stay away from gossip or slander. And so gossip is saying something about someone that's a lie and you're spreading it. And slander is saying something that's true about them. Like they've done that thing, but you're sharing it with someone who doesn't need to know. And you're trying to ruin that person's reputation. So that's what God's just been convicting me on. And I've been having to learn to ask the Lord to search me daily, especially because I was really anxious today. Ryan knows. And I like vented it all to him, but the Lord's like, you need to vent that to me and you need to also, yeah, just write that down in your planner. Like, not that I can't tell Rye, but I need to also combine like seeking God and then also practical things like having a planner and being organized. So anyway, that's what I've been learning. So, um, Reagan, thank you so much for joining us. It's been so, so fun. Mm, thank and you for having me. Yeah. Part one. Yes. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. And also, if you'd like to follow us on Instagram to check out our behind the scenes, you can type in uh, Calvary Conversations. And also, if you want to sponsor or support or donate uh, to the podcast, this is a listener, listener supported podcast. So you guys can do that in the description below where it says donate. And I think that's it. Thank you so much, guys. And we'll see you next week. God bless.